<clears throat> well, here we are. Thursday. Losing track myself now. So. Thursday, April 16th. For us, usually that's the day after tax day since Teresa is an accountant. So. However, this year doesn't really matter, does it? So, <clears throat> anyway, you can see our regulars on here this morning. <clears throat> we uh, had a, uh, had somebody reach out this morning that um, having some pretty hard times with some addiction and uh, seeing more and more of that uh, during this time, I think it's amazing. I, I shouldn't, I, I just need to quit reading articles and probably need to get off of social media except for doing this because I read an article and governors all over the country are telling us why the liquor stores and the pot shops are essential because of the addicts. And so they show compassion by continuing to sell them this junk that is killing them. And uh, anyway, I just, uh, our government has lost their minds. Our government here in this state has lost their mind. I read another article this morning where our Napoleon governor has said that um, he's wanting to start opening the state up on the 26th of April, but there's going to be some long-standing social distancing policies coming, and and he said that uh, definitely wants to open up the restaurants because that's that's important that we have the restaurants, but uh, the elephant in the room and one he doesn't mention is the churches and. I'm just going to say this on here so we have a record. I am tired of him telling us that the church is not essential. The day is coming. So anyway, you pray for us and uh, pray for each other during this time. And, uh, you know, we, we need to be aware of the... Uh, challenges that come and um just heard a report yesterday from a friend of ours that was in jefferson county yesterday speaking to part of the sheriff's department there in jefferson county and he said the suicide rates in jefferson county have just exploded um you know we have anyway the i was with another family yesterday uh um, talking to them when he gets a phone call and got laid off from his job while we're standing right there. And a um, lot of uh, interesting things going on and uh, we need to um, definitely need to be praying for one another, seriously praying. And uh, honestly, I, I do believe that uh, God is, is working and we as uh, church people, uh, those that are believers, we need to be on our, our knees and we need to be praying and asking God to uh, help us with this. I'm, I, I'm just one of those fed up days, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, but we just don't need Bill Gates telling us what to do. All of a sudden, because he has money, he thinks that he can become a doctor. And uh, you know, everybody's scrambling, trying to find a cure for this. There is a cure. There already is a cure. We as believers need to get on our hands and knees and we truly need to believe that God is listening and that God wants us to get things right. And, and we need to get back to, to serving him and loving him. And, and as a country, we need to look back to him. I mean, I don't, how many times do we see it in the scripture where, where God, you know, stayed the, the plagues immediately. And, you know, I, I don't, uh, I can't just go on preaching 
like normal and and everything is okay in case sera sera that that isn't what it is you know we need to we really need to get serious with god and, and i'm not talking about looking and blaming everybody else i'm talking about looking at our own lives and our own hearts and and asking god to do a work in our hearts and 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 realize that that you know I, i'm just I get tired of people coming to me and say, hey, you know, Pastor, my walk is good right now. Well, is it really good right now? Or are you lying to everybody, including yourself? You know, get things right in your life. If there's something that God needs to get rid of, then all you got to do is ask. You ask him, you know, hey, Lord, what is it in my life that I need to get right today? And and what is it that I'm holding on to that I shouldn't in you know, we need to we need to get down to business with God and get real and and understand people are dying of this and and I know that and but not only are they dying of the the virus they're they're killing themselves they're committing suicide whether it be by a gun hanging or that they're killing themselves with the the alcohol they're killing themselves with the with the drugs they're you know they're they're killing themselves with the the antipsychotic medicine that's being given to them and overdosing on that stuff and and you know we, we just got to we got to get real and and we need to get things right with God and so anyway that's the rant for the day i guess it's thursday you know thursday's always seem to be kind of a rough day so we need to pray for each other and uh you know, I'm not. I'm not here to depress all of you guys. We need to. Uh, you know, I'm just saying we we need to get things right and be serious with God about what's going on, and 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 we need to walk victoriously, and we need to understand that battle never stops. And read in Joshua 13:1 today. Now Joshua was old and stricken in years, and the Lord said unto him, Thou art old and stricken in years, and there remaineth yet very much land to be possessed. And just a reminder that just because we start getting older doesn't mean that that we got it made and that we can coast and that we need to sit back and let the young ones do it all and uh, I'm sorry it doesn't say that at all as a matter of fact uh, it tells us just the opposite and and you that have walked with the Lord for 50 years 60 years you, you're the ones that need to set the example and 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 really be the ones that show us how how to how do we go out, as the old cowboy would say, how do we go out with our boots on? How do we uh, stay in the faith and being, uh, you know, used of God even even when we're, when we're old and stricken in years? And, you know, that and I see that a, a, as a battle sometimes in people. And, and what a what a thrill it is when I when I meet those that are in their late 70s or 80s or even 90s and still love the Lord and, and are praising him and and letting God use them and we just need to keep it up and Caleb was an example of that was reminded in chapter 14 where Caleb comes to Joshua and, and says hey I, I want my inheritance you remember when we went in and we spied out and and uh, me and you Joshua we went in and we came back and told Israel hey this is right for picking we need to go and 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 he and he says that I brought him word again as it was in my heart and nevertheless my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people melt but I wholly followed the Lord my God, you know guess guess why, guess why the sorry getting too wound up this morning you know like I said it's one of those days it's Thursday right. <sighs> fancy little tripod or something here guess why Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because they were afraid and and they didn't follow him by faith and so they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years because they were afraid you know we we need to we, we need to understand that I'm not saying the, the flu isn't real. It's real, okay? I know that. And everybody else knows that. But this this ludicrous idea that, that we hide out and hide under our couch and pull the blinds and, 
and spray down a package with Lysol before we bring it in or, or wear our rubber gloves, you know, to get the mail or, you know, the, these things that, you, you know, we are, we need to understand that what Caleb said, he said, they made the people's heart melt, but I wholly followed the Lord, my God. And then he goes on and, 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 and he says in verse nine, because thou hast wholly followed the Lord, my God. And then Caleb goes in verse 12. Now, therefore, give me this mountain. And then in verse 14, why? Because that he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel. I mean, do, do we not think that God can't protect us? Can, do, do we not think that God tells us to go do things and, and, and so we need to get out there and we need to do these things and, and we need to live the way that God wants us to live. And we need to, we need to tell people about Jesus and we need to, we need to come together and worship God and, and, and do the things that we know that God wants us to do. And I really could care less what the government says. And I could really care less what our infidel uh, uh, governor tells us or some health department that thinks that that it's their job to take care of me. It's not, it's not their job. It's God's job. I need to do what God tells me to do, not what they tell me to do. And we're, we're in such a society today that in our whole world, you know, we're, we're, we're trusting in science and, and thinking science has all the answers. Science don't have nothing. It has nothing. Bill Gates has no answer at all to eternity. And, and you look at the pictures of him, that, that old boy's getting old. And his day is coming soon where he's going to stand in judgment of God just like everybody else. And, and when I stand in front of God and knowing Christ is my Savior, then I want to be able to stand in front of God and God say, well done, thou faithful servant. Uh, and I don't, I'm sorry, but if science don't agree with God, then science is wrong. And, and here they are trying to use science to scare everybody to death. And we need to walk in victory and we need to walk in trusting that God's got this and that God can take care of us and quit living in so much fear that we have infected the 300 and some million people in America that are scared to death because even believers are hiding under their couch and crying out for God or not crying out for God. They're, they're, begging for Trump to save them. Trump ain't going to save you either. God is. So, <sighs> you know, it, uh, it, it's just an amazing day. You know, I, I read in, in Proverbs 13 and verse 7 today, there is that maketh himself rich, yet hath nothing. There is that maketh himself poor, yet hath great riches. I was, I was with another couple yesterday. Yeah, I know. Social distancing, blah, 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 blah. So I was with a couple yesterday. When I'm with that couple, he gets a call and gets laid off from his job. Right then, gone. Job's gone. And I'm not talking about a job at Dairy Queen working 20 hours a week, minimum wage, okay? I'm talking about this was a job that took care of his family. And, and uh, a well-paying job. And he took it well. And he said, it's okay. You know, I, I'm looking and, and I've already, it looks like I've already found something and God's going to provide this. And, and, and I, and I praise the Lord for, for the attitude because you know, what, you know what we need to realize is we need to realize that our, our our being who we are isn't based on how much we have. Our there are those that make themselves rich and have nothing, and God's showing us that through this. I mean, He's showing us that that um, you don't have to have a bunch of possessions, and and so there are good things coming of this. So so please don't. I'm thinking, I'm a, I'm thinking God's dead. God, God is very much alive and God is doing a great work. And, and that's the thing. I mean, we need to live for him. We need to no fear when, when we're doing what we know that God wants us to do. And if you have to walk through a field of, of serpents, then, and you know, that's what God's needing you to do. Then you walk through the field of serpents and you go witness to whoever it is. And, 
you know, I'm, so I'm not a snake handler, so don't go that way, okay? I'm just using it as an illustration. But, but how we need to look to him and know that, that he's there. And, and then I, I read in, in Luke 18 today, in all of uh, the first 17 verses I read today, and, and the, the first eight verses talk about uh, just a persistent prayer. I, I think the word is importunity. And by that, just talked about a lady that kept coming to the judge, wanting wanting uh, the judge to make a make a statement, you know, on her behalf, and and he just, she just kept coming back to him, coming back to him, coming back to him, and in doing so, uh, that judge finally said, "Good grief, you know, I need to do something with this." So he answered her request and and did that, and and God used that. He said, "Look, if." If an, if an unsaved lady can go to the judge and, and want this kind of judgment and just keep pestering and pestering and pestering, then why can't we as children of God continue to knock on the door, continue to ask, continue to, to, to um, you know, we just need to continue to, to, to ask God to do something and, and, and to help us and, and to, you, you know, there... I don't know if I should say this or not. There, there's Satan is attacking, okay, and, and there's some there there's some there's just attacks that not everybody knows about in in a church family and and in our church itself. And and you know I um, I had some good advice yesterday from a pastor friend. He said, you know what? He said if you got issues and and there's somebody who has issues, you just keep telling God on him. And boy, isn't that the truth? In 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 whether it be our politicians that that keep pestering the churches, whether it be someone that that just is mad or you know slandering or whatever, you know what we need to do? We just need to tell God on them, and we just need to tell God on them every day and uh, moment by moment, and and ask God to do something and, and help us, and 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 God can do that, and so we need to to uh, do so and. Mark Pritchett, good to see you on here, man. You're you've been a blessing to me, and uh, back almost thirty years ago now, brother. And, and uh, uh, I appreciate you, Mark. <clears throat> and but we need to we need to go to God, and we just need to be persistent. And and but then he also goes on in verses nine through seventeen. And I'll I'll read this. I got to hurry. I'm getting long winded on these things. I need to cut them shorter for you guys, but. Verse 9, he said, And he spake a parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For every one that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. You know, it, something else that, and this isn't the exact quote, but uh, Spurgeon said something about it. He said, uh, you know, someone's talking bad about you. Just uh, actually just praise the Lord because what they're saying is that nearly as bad as who you really are. And, uh, you know, in, in this time, this this is a time where, where we need to, uh, well, we just need to stand together as believers. And you're right. God is uniting his body. And, and we need to, Now's the time where, you know how we stand though? We stand by being on our knees. And, and I need to do more. I mean, I say that, but my prayer life has, has it has to go up a, 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 a two or three more levels than what it is. And, and truly be praying for each other and truly being praying for God to do something in, 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 in not in our country, but right now to do something in our lives and, and to help us to be what we need to be and quit listening to all this noise that, that I've been listening to today and, and to get past that. And so, you know, we need to, uh, we just need to stand and we stand by 
we just need to stand by staying on our knees. And so, anyway, I hope this went through. I see some of you might be having some problems with this. Hope not, but Facebook was giving us fits at uh, church on Tuesday, too. So, anyway, um, not maybe the most inspiring devotion today, but uh, you hang on, and uh, it is going to be good, and God is blessing. And we look forward to seeing what God's going to do through this in our country, but especially we need to look for him to do something in our lives and in the, the lives of our church people, and then we'll see it uh, in our community. So God bless you guys, and, and uh, have a good day. Uh, pray for me, if you would, so that I keep my head on and the top of it doesn't explode. So all is good. Okay. Love you guys and uh, have a great day today.